so I'm here with Donald, and uh, we're here at Norman S. Wright in Oakland, California. Donald and Norman S. Wright were uh, kind enough to host me here, and I wanted to have Donald give me just a look through um, this training center, because it's actually really cool. It's, it's nothing like I've ever seen on the VRV side. I almost said VRF. <laughs> <laughs> on the VRV side, because it is all Daikin. I'm gonna turn the camera around, and we're just gonna kind of walk through what they have in here and let uh, Donald explain uh, what they got going on. All right, so a lot of this, first off, I'm just gonna give you a quick view of the room here, and this is a really nice training center. I'm very thankful that they're allowing me to kind of storm their grounds for as being a non-VRV expert. Let's start over here, and and just kind of walk the way through the equipment and the controls and what you have here and just kind of introduce everything. We kind of specialize in in-house technical support and on the control side really because that's that's kind of where the industry struggles with what we see out here is controls integration and how it works. So we offer to all of the control vendors that we deal with anybody that wants to bring your equipment here let's let's test it right so we have all of our live equipment that that is functional that you would see exactly in the field how it's set up we even get the error codes right we test the product to make sure that when we get on a job site that it that it works right and we have the answer for that random question that you get at the end of the job. So that's really why this place is, is, is here, is right. We have all live working equipment so that we can troubleshoot with the tech. We offer two different training classes free to all of our clients. Uh, we have our, our regular install class, which is, just gives you the inner, the overview of how the system is installed and how it should prop operate. And then the next class would be our service and troubleshooting class, which kind of gives them a deeper dive into the operations of the units. So Norman S. Wright is a distributor or rep firm for multiple different products. So, I mean, you can see our, our lovely skylights up here. These are green heck dampers, so obviously we grab green heck. And we are the sole distributor for Daikin VRV in California. That's not to say you can't buy the splits and smaller things from, from your Johnstone Supply, from your Schlake Brothers, any of the other supply houses. But if you wanted a VRV product, you'd have to come through Norman Wright. This is the central controlling offering from Daikin. This is our iTouch manager. It's the central screen, right? It, it gives you the, the overview of what the Daikin system is doing. You know, it's a big 10 inch touch screen, so that, that scares people people sometimes, but really it's it's nothing more than a touch screen glorified thermostat. You can do scheduling, you can do basic interlocking. Up from that, this is if we need to get some more in-depth controls. I mean, this is Wago, this is everybody's seen it, most people have seen it. We use this for digital inputs, digital outputs, some analog inputs if we need to do some, some specialized controls. Other than that, that's, that's kind of Daikin's offering for the control world from factory. Now there's hundreds of different options for other equipment if you wanted to integrate. Everybody knows what this is. This is a Jace. Do whatever you need to do, control it, right? These devices can be either backnet clients or backnet servers, so we can pull points in or push points out. For those of you who have ever worked with a relay, <laughs> this is basically smart relays. This is basically smart relays, and it gives you just a lot more control over whatever it is that you're trying to control. Right. So when we sure. when we're talking really vague like this, it's not like we're trying to hide information from you. It's literally just very open ended. It's like using a whole bunch of ninety three forties in order to control a whole bunch of different stuff. You know, sure. so it's very it's it it seems complicated, but it's really not that scary. Moving on down the line, different control options. So this is this is a product by Coolmaster to integrate with the Daikin system to get through to home automation stuff, make it a lot easier. To continue down the line, these are going to be our single phase VRV technology Sky Air units. So it's going to be smaller tonnage. It's hooked up to the fan cord right above you. And then off the back of that one is a particular interesting product that's called a DZK kit or a Daikin zoning kit. Uh, so you can have four, six, or eight zones coming off of one fan coil. So really perfect for the residential market if you're really trying to sp save space. Yeah, and the one thing that I, I think a question that comes up a lot with the difference between BRV and ductless, because it, it, it does become kind of a fine line when you're talking about single phase. And so on this, is the metering device located in the condenser or is it located in the air handler, right? Air. That's what I figured, because that's usually sort of one of the, one of the primary distinctions, because people say, well, single phase, VRV, isn't that just ductless? But the when the metering device is in the air handler, that sort of becomes VRV yeah. at that point. So if we want to continue on that topic, right there, the, the the split would be, right, we have our Sky Air systems, which would be what we were just talking about, the VRV, basically, you know, it's page valve at the unit. Uh, if we go down to the last unit here, that's when we get into what people would consider conventional ductless, right? So this is what we call a mini split. So this is a four port, four MXS mini split. So you could have up to four heads off of one condensing unit. And this, yes, the expansion valves will be at the unit. Right, right. So you have the expansion valves outside, and so now both of your lines, um, you know, your one line is, is saturated, you know, flash gas, liquid vapor mix, and then the other is your suction line coming back, but they're both cold lines. And there is some 
disadvantage in that again, compared to VRV because you do tend to have more losses, and so your line length limits tend to be a, quite a bit quite a bit shorter. That's the number one call we get is the system won't communicate. We didn't look at the install manual and say, hey, you've got 33 feet. RTFM, <laughs> read the fancy manual. So we've got uh, ceiling cassettes here. We've got all different types of uh, fan coil slash air handling units. Um, let's talk a little bit about, because when somebody sees these, condensers, these big VRV condensers, they get freaked out because they look so much different. But is there anything that you need to know, like if you were gonna work on one of these? You touched on it already, right? Read the book, right? The, the, the biggest thing we could tell people is if the piping network on the outside follows the rules that Dykin sets forth, which are pretty simple, there's really nothing to worry about. Proper airflow coming out of the condenser, keeping the coil clean, right? That's the big service things, right? Just, just gotta keep the coils clean. In Four and a half years of doing this, I mean, obviously we've everybody's seen their fair share of compressor change outs, but major failures, I've mean, not really seen many. Install them right in the first place, keep them clean, yeah. wire them upright, set up the controls properly. Um, and you do a lot of that sort of initial commissioning and setup mm -hmm. uh, for contractors, right? Yeah, so the most common thing we see is they don't have power, right? There's no line voltage and the communication wire is not landed or it's not run or it's not, landed on the right place. That's the most common things we see is we get this U4 error code, which is just a general communication error. Right. And nine times out of 10 is somebody didn't turn the disconnect on. No, it is not talking. Yeah, and so then you have, um, this is actually interesting because I just heard about this recently. So tell us a little bit about this. This is a project that's probably about four years old at this point. So what we take is we take a conventional heat pump, right? This is our version of a heat pump, right? A two pipe system. And you can hook up an external expansion valve to it and hook it up to an existing air handler as long as the coil meets the spec. So this is just a regular Dyke Envision air handler with a coil in it that is now a VRV air handler. Right. So you can, I think the biggest one we did was 26 tons at 14,000 CFM, right? So right. that's a big air handler. Yeah. Because um, in VRV, most of the intelligence is going to be in the controls and the condenser. Right? Yeah, the condenser. Yeah. yeah. That's the brains of the operation. Yeah. Very cool. Um, so obviously, anytime you're dealing with uh, VRV, uh, anytime you have drives in equipment, you have to be really careful because you've got pretty high voltages in there if you touch Very, the wrong yeah. thing. Very high DC uh, voltage, so yeah. upwards of 750 volts DC. So it, uh, it'll kill you quick. It'll wake you up in the morning. Oh yeah. All right, well that's that's that. Anything else, uh, anything else you wanna show us here? All of our product offering is, we have one of every fan coil except for the brand new ones in our, in our operation here. And we have our, our vintage equipment on this side. Sounds great. So Norman S. Wright Training Center here in beautiful Oakland, California. Yeah, if you ever are in need of anything like this in California, they're the guys to come to. And I really appreciate them helping us out by hosting this training event. So thank, thank you, Donald. You. I appreciate it. Absolutely.